don't only love God when things are rosy. You don't only love God when things are fine. You don't only love God when things are okay. You love God even when the pain is more excruciating. You love God even when till you are planted. That is when you are watered. And to be watered means you will definitely flourish. Flourishing is at the place of watering. Flourishing is at the place of being connected to your source. And let the believer take your seats as you shout the glorious Amen. Amen. Linda Zugidara, Lika Protosida, Shalagura Gabrigadosia, Linda Rakatosia. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 Are you excited to be in God's house this morning? May the hand of the Lord touch you. You will have a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, victorious King in heaven, for another opportunity to be a blessing to your people. Breathe life into your word and change the story of somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus. Two Sundays ago, that's um, the Sunday before last, which was the first Sunday of the month, the Lord began to lead us in a direction. And that's the direction we are meant to run with in the course of the month. I have told you about the vision God drops in our spirit to run with. It is either we are pursuing something or something is pursuing us. And I read from the book of First Peter chapter 5 verse 10 in that very first teaching of that Sunday. And I told us about establishment. The first book of First Peter chapter 5 verse 10, the Bible talks about uh, after you have suffered a little while, it said he shall bless you, he shall strengthen you, he shall establish you, and he shall settle you and therefore every establishment is what guarantees settlement every establishment guarantees settlement until you are established there is no settlement yet so establishment is what secures an empire establishment is what secures a kingdom establishment is what secures a business establishment is what secures every man the security of every man is found at the place of establishment is God talking to somebody here may God establish you establish your business establish your marriage and establish all that concerns you Amen. and I went ahead in that teaching to tell us about divine and material establishment but may God establish you from all ramifications Amen. and I went ahead to tell us secrets to divine establishment and one of the secrets I've been discussing I discussed last Sunday and that same Sunday was the are winning the heart of god you must find a way to win the heart of god you must find a way to win the heart of god to be established you must find a way to win the heart of god how do we win the heart of god we must understand that god speaks to us through our heart every connectivity that god has with us is through our heart every connectivity is done through our hearts hallelujah and i pray and i decree may god open your heart to find a connectivity with him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May God find a way to connect with you in the course of this season of establishment. In the mighty name of Jesus, I said from the beginning that we discussed, you know, about establishment and how to be established. Number one, win the heart of God. How to be established, win the heart of God. How do you win the heart of God? Number one love god unconditionally love god unconditionally when you love god you will not be forced to do some things when you love god nobody will remind you to be in church on time when you love god nobody will remind you to give to god your tight your 10 percent when you love god nobody will cajole you to walk for god in god's house so establishment will begin with you loving god unconditionally lord i don't have money but i still love you Lord, I may not have funds in my account, but you are still my God. I cannot change you from being my God because of circumstances. Those are the unconditionalities that makes us know that you love God. You love God unconditionally. You don't only love God when things are rosy. You don't only love God when things are fine. You don't only love God when things are okay. You love God even when the pain is more excruciating. You love God even when it appears that all hope is lost. But can I pray for somebody this morning? May God give you a heart to love him. So you win the heart of God by loving God unconditionally. 
things are fine you still love God things are not okay you still love God things are worse you still love God you pray and the prayers are yet unanswered you still love God you 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 cry to God you fast and it appears as if your fasting has turned to hunger strike you still love God unconditionally Somebody told me, he said, I, I, I let God bless me so that I can worship him the way I want to worship him. I want to worship him in an exclusive way. I said, you don't love God at all. I said, if you love God, then you must understand that a relationship with God is a relationship that is devoid of any condition. Sometimes you love, you know, you, uh, what, what marriage should give is the love for a spouse unconditionally. That is why when the priest of the pastor is joining you, he declares something said for better for worse. That means there are days that things can turn around the way it was not. There are days that things could be rough and then the husband is still loving the wife no matter how tough things are. And then the wife is still loving her husband no matter how tough things are. That is the kind of relationship we should have with God. We cannot say we love God only when we have a car to ride. What if you had to take transport to church? Would you still love God? Loving God unconditionally is one of the ways to win his heart. Can I tell you everything? This, something this morning. Everything you are going through right now is a process. It will just come and pass. It will just come and pass. Every condition anyone is going through this morning is just a process. It will come and pass. The Bible keeps saying and it came to pass and it came to pass. No condition right now in your life will definitely be permanent. None. None. If life itself is not permanent, what about the condition in it? The conditions will come and pass. You don't have money today? Come on. Keep loving God. Money is coming so much that you will dole it away. You didn't hear me. I said you don't have money today. Keep loving God. Money will come such that you will begin to dole out money. If your amen is better, you are the one God is talking to. You don't have a car today. Come on, keep loving God. It will come to a point in time you will become a car distributor. Ali Karakatosi Gafrida. It will come to a point in time when people are celebrating birthdays. You 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 give them car keys at their birthday gift. So shall it happen. Every level in life you are experiencing right now is just on the passive, including success including success is still just on the passive it's not talking to somebody here you can succeed and succeed and succeed and keep succeeding there are some people that succeed and get to a point and you know things could happen the devil could bring his finger something could go wrong but for you you will continually succeed i didn't hear your amen like thunder I am saying this because of people who are intimidating other people because of the success they have experienced. Some are, are you know, James chapter 4 in verse 3. The Bible says, you ask and you receive not because you pray amiss. You pray amiss because you, you want to satisfy your personal lust with those things. There are some people whose prayers are not answered. Why? Because the, 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 the essence or the purpose for which they are asking for something is to intimidate other people. So no success is also permanent. If you are using position or success or whatever to intimidate people, you must also understand that no condition is permanent. Where you are supposed to do good, you do bad because you are the one seated at that point. No condition is permanent. No seat is permanent. Even the presidential seat has a tenure of four years. It's got talking to somebody here. At most eight years, the president will go. Another one will come. So, any president that is victimizing people today should also get ready because a time will come when he would also be victimized if he's still alive. You don't understand what God is saying here. So, every condition is on the passive. Understand that and love God unconditionally. Your unconditional love for God will make you win the heart of God, will make you connect to the heart of God, will make God speak to you. It is this unconditional love that will bring about intimacy this unconditional love will now make you look for intimacy that's number two you begin to connect god in an intimate relationship with him you connect to the father in an intimate relationship what is intimacy with god intimacy is a close familiarity of friendship a 
that's a close familiarity of friendship so you connect with god at the place of intimacy you get an intimate relationship with god your relationship with god is no longer the one that has to do with your pastor connecting you it now has to do with god and you so when your pastor ministers to you in the church you will take it back to the table of your prayer altar and say father this is what my spiritual father has told me lord this is the direction you have to take it to it's got talking to somebody here it's got talking to somebody here i pray for someone under the sound of my voice may the hand of the lord bring lifting to your destiny may an intimate relationship with god carry you to a level that you never expected a level of total establishment a level of establishment in the mighty name of jesus christ so intimacy with god guarantees a relationship with god that will make you hear god clearly i told you about intimacy to to have intimacy with god is to hear what god is saying towards establishment isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 he said thou shalt hear a voice by the right side and by the left saying this is the way walk here in it so intimacy with god will guarantee you to hear what god is saying intimacy with god will grant you the ability to understand what god is doing god may be taking you through a process and you may not understand what god is doing so your intimacy with him will help you understand what he is doing part time intimacy with god will give you the understanding of what god is doing so intimacy with god will also give you the ability to move in the direction where god is leading the direction where god is leading is very very important and it comes from intimacy if you want to know where god is leading you what god is doing and have ability to understand where god is taking you to then you must be in an intimate relationship with him it is an intimate relationship that will give you the direction of where god is leading you to so no establishment will do without these three things understanding what god is doing understanding where god is taking you to and understanding the direction of his leading understanding what god is saying understanding what god is doing and the ability to move in the direction of his leading may the lord bring establishment to your life in the mighty name of jesus and i told you that establishment is sponsored through the application of wisdom and knowledge so wisdom and knowledge are very very uh you know some of the prerequisite that is needed for establishment proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom for the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom the fear of the lord so every establishment that does not have god in it i am not part of it that is not what i'm talking about establishment in god with god is what i am talking about because an establishment is only secured by the hand of god may the lord secure you from all ramification in the mighty name of jesus christ and i told us four things about wisdom wisdom comes from listening wisdom wisdom comes from listening wisdom brings clarity wisdom is shown not only in what we say but also in how we live wisdom is shown also in how we live wisdom should grow number four wisdom should grow luke chapter 2 verse 52 the bible says and the child grew in wisdom and in stature wisdom should grow the place of intimacy is a medium of communication and intimacy would have to do with prayer it would have to live with that would have to do with living a righteous life it will have to do with keeping yourself for the lord you cannot have an intimate relationship with your wife and you will accept your wife to sleep with another man is it possible is it possible you cannot have an intimate relationship with your husband and you accept that your husband will sleep with another person so when we have an intimate relationship with god we cannot have any other god aside from the almighty god and how do we make sure this is strong it is made strong by reason of the things we do in the course of this intimate relationship number one prayer prayer have a prayer life you pray at all time the bible says pray without season pray without season. don't seize it pray you are sitting down pray you want to undertake a task pray you want to you want to travel pray you want to begin a new business pray pray keep 
praying. He said in Isaiah 30, 21, he said, Thou shalt hear a voice by the right side saying, This is the way. Walk here in it. This is the way. Walk here in it. I pray that God will show somebody the way this morning. So the place of intimacy is so wonderful. And number three, on, how, on winning the heart of God is to win the heart of God towards establishment. He said, you must be planted. You must be planted. Psalm chapter 92 verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. God is a supply source that secures the spiritual and the physical. God is a supply source that secures the spiritual and the physical. So any establishment that has no routine in God is not an establishment. An establishment that has no routine in God is not as an establishment. It's not a guaranteed establishment. Routine in God is what makes an establishment. Psalm 92 he said, those that be planted in the heart of our God, in the house of our God, those that be planted, if you are planted, that is the beginning point of your establishment. Being planted is the starting point of your establishment. Being planted is the ABC of establishment. You need to be planted. You need to be planted. As a matter of fact, to be planted means that not every pastor is your pastor. Not every prophet is your prophet. Not every minister of the gospel is your minister. We have prophets everywhere. We have pastors everywhere. We have ministers of the gospel everywhere. But you must identify which is your prophet. You must identify. To be planted means to be to be taprooted. I told us about the perennial crops. The perennial crops have a particular quality. And that quality is the fact that they, are, they have a taproot. They are planted because they know that they will not expire in one or two years. They get planted such that they get a source of supply that will give to other sources, which is the ordinary root. So to be planted, the Bible means, is to have a source and be planted in a place where you can grow both spiritually and physically. It's a day that be planted in the house of our God shall flourish in the courts of our God. Being planted means to have a guaranteed source of supply. Spiritual feeding is very, very involved in this. Spiritual feeding. Spiritual feeding. You must have, you must be planted where your spiritual life is paramount and is taken care of. You must be planted. Where your spiritual life is paramount, is taken care of. It is taken care of in the place of sharing the good news by the Logos word and taken care of also in the area of the prophetic and taken care of by also having a relationship with your minister of the gospel. A relationship with your minister is very, very important. There are some persons that like to go where there is, you know, so much of coloration. But there are some people that go, they go there, they have an intimate encounter with God. They know they are connected with God and they are also connected with their prophet. Is God talking to somebody here? Is God talking to somebody here? So to be planted means you will be watered. Means you will be taken care of. You cannot be effectively watered if you are not planted. Until you are planted, that is when you are watered. And to be watered means you will definitely flourish. Flourishing is at the place of watering. Flourishing is at the place of being connected to your source. So they that be planted in the house of our God. Anything that has carried your feet and left wherever you are coming from to settle you here. It means the Lord is about to plant somebody who is hearing this right now. That this is the place where you will find everything you are looking for. I don't, I, I, I can't miss what to say it. If God has directed your feet by however, maybe through the social media, maybe through an invitation by somebody, maybe some, somehow, somehow, you have found your feet into this commission. It is, it is an, a, a divine idea of planting. It's a divine orchestration to bring planting to your life. Ask yourself, since you have been gallivanting and running Helter Skelter, what has it benefited you? 
it could benefit you a one second miracle one second miracle everything scatters again but when you are planted the storm will come you are you are you are you are planted when you are planted the winter will come the amatan will be so excruciating the sun will be so tough you are still planted you are still flourishing why because you are planted so being planted is very very important if you want to win the heart of god be planted somebody say i am planted somebody say i am planted to be planted means you will not find any other source to, to you know to help to find a way out no other source if you say you are serving god let it be god and god alone let it not be today god tomorrow mammon tomorrow at next tomorrow it is now an affinity with the devil native doctor he gives you soap to bath and then you are still coming to church which one you day you need to be planted if you want to be planted with the native doctor fine it was before when people tell me say ah uh, daddy in fact eh, if i don't if i pray and this thing does not answer honestly i'll go to native doctor i'll be saying oh god please let the person not go to native. if you want to go to native doctor go go and build your house there if i live with him it's god talking to somebody here it's not talking to somebody here he told joshua he said today i have made he said i have i have created before thee he said choose choose it this day whom you will serve choose it this day he said choose you this day make your choice it's god talking to somebody here your the fact that you are connected to a voodoo man or you want to join an occultic confraternity will not make me stop preaching the gospel i'll still preach it's god talking to somebody here so it's a matter of choice but my assignment this morning is to give you the right choice to understand that they that be planted in the lord will definitely find flourishing there is no two ways about it you will definitely find flourishing why is it that you are coming to church you are coming with boldness but you are going to native doctor you are hiding you are covering face cap you put in fact these days of mask when I see some people, I will just be driving. See some people coming out from some kind of bush. The Spirit of God will tell me he went to see a native doctor. So people will wear that this mask now, not to prevent the virus, but to hide identity. <laughs> Look at some people. They are not wearing it to prevent the virus. They are wearing it to hide identity. So if where you are going to will make you hide identity, your conscience will tell you that you are in the wrong place. You are doing the wrong thing. You only hide when you do the wrong thing. But when you are doing the right thing, you do it with audacity and authority. In fact, when people see you coming to church, they say, where did they go? Ah, now nah, you don't know, say today and Sunday, make I go to church. But how many of you can boldly say, hm, I want to go and see Baba? Eh? You can't. So why use it to threaten the people of God? We are no longer threatened. Is God talking to somebody here? Is God talking to somebody here? So being planted is a guarantee is a you know guarantee source of supply being planted is to constantly connect to constantly connect a tree that is planted do not move about it remains a tree that is planted abides it does not move around it abides so abide if you want establishment abide because every establishment goes through a process it will go through the tilling of the ground. It will go through the blinding. It will go through the DPC. It will go through the lintel. It will go through the casting and the roofing. It will go through different processes. So I don't know the process you are in right now. But one thing is certain. There is establishment going on in your life you may not see. I didn't hear your amen like thunder. There is establishment going on in your life. So if a tree is removed from the ground... What happens to the tree? What happens to the tree? It dies. When you remove the tree from the ground, you have removed it from its source. It dies. God has technically in his wisdom and divine arrangement created the world to fit into several creatures. For the tree, the tree will have to get its source of supply from the earth. For the fish, the fish will definitely have to live in the water. Bring the fish out of water. What will die? The fish dies. And you human being, you want to, you want because you can keep breath for 60 seconds. Or maybe two minutes at max. And then you dive into the sea. You want to live like a fish. You will die too. It's God talking to somebody here. 
since fish cannot live and breathe the normal air we breathe that is because this is what we understand and the fish understands life in the water so also it applies to anyone who is planted and rooted out today you are planted in Shekinah tomorrow you want to be planted each time you are rooted out now understand this I am sharing this knowledge to you with you today so that you can understand and understand how to live your life from henceforth because in the time of ignorance God overlooks but right now he collects all men to begin afresh again. I am sharing this with you because you have to begin afresh. You need to be planted and be rooted. Because if you remove a plant from where it is to go and replant, there, is, there, 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 must, there, there must be some negativity. Sometimes they end up dying. So to be planted is a sure means of establishment. Don't eat a goosey today and tomorrow you go and eat a griyokbe. You will purge. It's not talking to somebody here. It's not talking to somebody here. So be planted. Be planted. They will be planted. If you, if you imagine you just release lion. You just release a lion around this place. What will happen? Eh? It will do what? What will happen? People will begin to go one after the other. Anointing cannot stop it. Just release like five lions around here now. Eh? <laughs> so where do lions have to live? In the forest. And when they are caught, they are put in the zoo on check. When you release them where human beings are, they have, they have a field day. They will eat you and eat me. <laughs> it's God talking to somebody here. Is God talking to somebody here? And that is why certain things begin to happen in your life and finances the moment you are uprooted from where you are planted. You are uprooted from Shekinah. You begin to see certain kind of challenges. Harsh times, tough times, things turn upside down. I'm not saying that Shekinah is the guaranteed place. But I'm just telling you what you should understand by way of divine knowledge being planted. It's a day that be planted in the house of our God. In the house of our God. I to, I've told you several times. I said, check if you have if you have found fulfillment in the place of your prayer and ask, Lord, tell me about this man of God. Tell me about this man of God and his wife. And then God speaks to you and says they are genuine. There is nothing that stops you from being planted. If the Spirit of God has spoken to you and said, this man and this woman are genuine people, ministers of God. You then remain planted. But if God speaks to you and says, These people, they are not genuine, please find another church. There is no church that will take anybody to heaven. What will take any what will take anybody to heaven is the word of God that is ministered from the altar that you keep in your heart. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. So it's not about church, it is about you. And your relationship with the father. Is God talking to anybody here? Is God talking to anybody here? So being planted will secure establishment. It will secure establishment. You release, you release beds. And then you put beds inside water. What will happen to all of them? They will die because they don't have the life of fish. Beds are meant to fly in the air. So understand your habitat. Understand who your prophet is. Understand who your pastor is. And remain planted with your minister. Is God talking to anybody here? Is God talking to anybody here? I decree by the finger of Jehovah. May the Lord plant you. And may he establish you by reason of this planting. May the Lord plant you. And may he establish you by reason of this planting. So there is flourishing for being planted. When you are planted. And you come over time. You pass through the rigors of life. That would have cut you out from life. You begin to flourish. When you, when you put a plant in the ground. First of all. It will look as if it's not going to survive. And then in the, in the process of time. You just begin to see freshness. Some of the old leaves will fall out. Some of the things that are not wanted will fall out. And then there is going to be. A freshness that will come from a fresh supply. 
is God talking to somebody here? It comes from a fresh supply. There is a supply. As I'm talking to you right now, there are things God is cutting out from your life. I didn't hear your amen like thunder. There are things your life do not want anymore. God is gradually cutting them out, removing them from your life. The best thing that can happen to anyone this morning for establishment to take place is to find a guaranteed place in your heart that you are planted in Christ. That you are planted in the Lord. That you are planted in his house. They that be planted in the house of our God shall flourish in the cause of our God. I think it's in the book of Philemon where the Bible says we are hidden in Christ and Christ in God. Where are you hiding? Where, are, where have you found your footing and your rooting? The place you find your footing and your rooting will go a long way to determine your establishment. 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 It is not enough to be in church. No. You are not a student of a tertiary institution because you are within the school environment. Yes, sir. What makes you a student in a school is that you are duly admitted. Is God talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. It begins with admission. Mm. You are duly admitted into that school and then you do you, you carry out what we call your registration. Yes, sir. And regularize every process needed for you to be identified as one of those who have been admitted. Yes, sir. And that will now, now what it does not stop there. It will now make you attend lectures mm. and also feel what we call attendance. Yes, sir. It is this process that makes you a student of that institution. And that, well, that's how it applies also in Christ. That's how it applies in, in God. You are not planted because you are in Shekinah to worship. You are planted because I know my God and my God know me. You are planted because you have known God. You have a relationship with him. An intimate relationship at that. And then you are planted. And then you are in his house to get some freshness. Because I've told you often that each, each service you attend in Shekinah is a servicing of your destiny yes, sir. for better and greater exploits. My God. Lift your two hands and say, Father, Father today, 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 I declare before you with you. my hands lifted with my hands lifted that i have made a choice that i've made a choice to follow you and you alone to follow you and you i will alone. serve you till i die i will serve you till i die. will follow you till i die i will follow you till i die i am not going to delay i am not going to do as long as your grace carry me through as long as your grace carry me i through. have made up my mind i have made up my mind to follow you to follow till you. the end of my days to the end open of your days. mouth and take turn into prayer Shabbat 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 Shabbat